Hi there, it's Lynn Como. Getting ready to share some new stuff, or I should say, some old stuff. So if you're on, just say hello. I'm looking on the, the website to see if it's there. Hi girls, anybody there? Let me know. Okay, Joan, do me a favor. Which group am I in? Am I in the um, VIP group? Because I can't see it on my own screen. Hi, Linda. Hi, Lorraine. Hmm. All right. Well, wherever I am, I am. <laughs> So let's, um, it's such a miserable night out there, but this is such a great little thing to do on a Monday night. Uh, hopefully it's not interrupting too many of your favorite shows, but I'd love to show you um, how I did this look uh, with stamps. It's two-tone. It's called two-tone. And today I'm just going to do on stamps, and in another night I will show you a couple other uh, tips and tricks of the trade regarding that kind of a look. But um, this paper, this paper is a little bit of no worries as well as um, we used to have the, the basics, fundamentals, and oh, you know what? I keep, there's one other name and I cannot remember it. It's, it's eluding me, but I love it. Okay, no problem, Joan. Um, but I was really excited to scrap these photos because they're, the blue, this, this photo right here, Rick had captured it and I was able to print it out to get the full effect on two four by sixes. But um, I'm not here to talk to you about the photos, but the colors actually is what made me pick these patterns that I have. Thank you, Joan. <laughs> Good. Um, and um, because of the, I'm looking at it, the blues, we have the blues, we have some gray, we have some brown. And I'm like, well, let's try to go with this paper I have on hand. So it just kind of came together. And if you were to see the, the first part of it, it was very, very plain. So I just kept adding and adding a few details because details are what's really fun. But what I want to show you right now first, before we get into stamping, is this little trick okay a lot of times you gals ask how you know you want to flip open your flip flaps right so in this particular book what's going to happen is this is going to be glued to the front of the page protector that's why it's not glued right now and it's this one is going to flip open and then this one will flip this way because I wanted to do a lot of journaling of this day. But what I want to show you here is some really cute idea of how to just adhere this. And a lot of times you have a lot of things in your stash, but I'm going to let you know right now, there are, they're called the fundamental <coughs> assortments. Um, and they are in the clearance section. They're about, I think, $250 or $295. They used to be $995. And you will get six tabs you'll get some wood embellishments, glitter paper that's already uh, adhesive with triangles, circles, and hearts, and stars, and um, oh, the beautiful bows, <coughs> excuse me, six beautiful bows for like two, two fifty or three dollars. The four colors that are left are glacier, uh, pomegranate, 
pear, which is a pretty green, and Linda, I know you love purple, is thistle, and it's like a pinky purple. But you should grab them while they're there because you'll really like using these. Um, these just themselves used to be six bucks on their own, so it's a really good deal. What I'd like to show you is you're going to take one of these. Okay, let me just pull. I just keep all my stash together. I have little zippy bags of colors together. And in order for this to be glued to the flip flap, right, you want to do a glue dot under the top piece and then a glue dot on this piece. So I'll show you what I do. I just take this and I go to my glue, glue dots, right, and I want to put this right here and pick some glue off. And then I'm going to turn it over. And that's funny, Linda. You better email me, though, because I don't have it written down now. Um, so there's a glue dot. Whoops, I lost my glue dot here. Hold on. Came off on me. There it is. Okay. So there's one under the top, and this one is on the top. And the reason it's like that is so that you can adhere it, okay, to the flip-flap. So you kind of bend it a little bit. And you, st you stick it in. So if I wanted it to flip up, you can flip it this way. I could move this as well. It's really sticky though. But once it's on, it's on pretty good. Um, maybe I want to flip this up. So I might put this over here. It's after I've either put my photo in or journaling. And then this can now flip up. You'll note on here, I like to add some gems. Because it kind of hides that little tongue right here. And um, just look at your stash, look what you have that coordinates with your paper path or your photos or your layout. And these are already self-adhesive and you just stick them on top. And that's how easy it is to create these kinds of tabs. Now you can do tabs with buttons, you can do ribbon, you can do wood pieces, um, you could do paper different kinds of punch outs, whatever you want, and just use that same idea. If you're just doing it on top, you also might, like if you're doing a button on top to cover the glue dot, you might want to put a piece of a circle or another something else to cover it so that you don't see the glue dot on the back. But on this side, you can see I put two little dots right there. Okay? All right. So that's Flip flap tabs. That's how easy you can do something like this on your page. Okay. The other thing I wanted to show you, and let me just move this a second. Now, um, I really, <laughs> you know, it's funny, but I really liked adding this, and it was after I did everything, and I decided, let me add the lighthouse and then this strip here of the waves. So it's always about the details. So I don't know, do you girls remember this paper pack? Anybody? I'll go through it. See, I still have it because I am going to use it. And I just recently did these. Yay, our boat's back in the water. <laughs> so excited. Um, and did some journaling. But does this, now here I'm showing you too as well, um, I did a flip-flap tab here so you can see. This paper pack is called Regatta and it's about three, four years old. But now I have two um, flip-flaps together that I will glue here because it's all about the work that Rick did to this boat. It's been um, out of commission for two years and this is the first day we took it out so I really wanted to make that a special Day. But you could see I used one of those tabs. I know, I love the wood too. Thanks. But um, so Regatta is really a great paper pack. And that is where, now maybe this will help, this was the stamp set. So here's where I pulled out that uh, lighthouse. But the stamp set, and here is the wave, but the stamp set also came with really quite a few thin cuts. Okay. Uh, I already used the lighthouse. 
There's the lighthouse, there's a sailboat, there's the wave. So the wave is really cool that you're putting it through. You're just adding that detail. I didn't even stamp it. And that is along the bottom. Okay, so now let me just show you how I get this look. And I actually cut the lighthouse apart here, if you can see. But let me move this over. And then I will get, I promise to get to the stamping of the title. But first we are showing you a couple of tips. Okay, so here are my two colors, mink and toffee. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and here is the lighthouse stamp. And I want, what you can do is I will use the lighter color, which is mink, and ink the whole thing up. Um, and then I'm going to go to toffee. And you can just, I'll move this over here. You can just ink up because there's a line. It's perfectly easy for you to see exactly where to do the two-tone. So I'm not doing any kind of um, changing the color of anything here and straight up and down. Okay, that's how I do my thin cuts. I like to thin cut first and then I stamp. That's me. If you want to do it the other way, that's up to you. Okay, but on this layout, what I did do is I cut this off here and just wanted it a little bit popped up. But I wanted to show you uh, how I just did these cute little rocks because I really like the look here, as you can see, of the coastline. So I'm really trying to duplicate that look. So one way that you could do that, and let me tell you that this is our new um, cleaner, chamois cloth. It, it works great. Just wipe it off. You get two. So you're going to take your stamp ink it up, part of it up in um, the mink. And then you just, I'm just going to tap it a little bit like that. And then I would hand fussy cut the rocks out. This just this one piece. So I'm gonna do that a couple of times. Clean that off. I like to clean my stamps in between when I'm going two-tone so that I don't get the brown in the, the mink. But you're always working from lighter into a darker color. So I'm just going to show you this one more time with this look. Okay, so you can see it's a little bit there. But I also want to show you, um, I'm going to ink this now in mink. And another way that you could add detail, if you're not comfortable doing that, is with a little sponge dauber. And this is going to soften the look. So I'm adding a little bit of sponging along that lighthouse bottom, those rocks. So you can see the difference, right? You could see how much color I have here. And then sponging actually really softens the look, graduates it so you see more more brown working into the gray where you can see here I have that line but it doesn't really matter to me so I basically cut those out and just stuck four of them or three of them behind the lighthouse actually it was four of them so that's how I got that kind of a look so it's really showing you a great way to use your stamps um, beyond just the one lighthouse okay you can have fun with this and use it along the bottom of a page as well. So hopefully that was a good little tip for you. Okay, let me get rid of this color. All right, now let's go on to what you're really wanting to know is about how we got this two-tone, right? So let me talk to you a little bit about stamps alphabet sets, okay? But you could use this technique with other stamps as well. Today, we sell our E-size stamp sets. Uh, you get two sheets in one package like this, right? <coughs> Thanks, Joan. I do, the sponging is fun too. This would be a cute one to do as well with a two-tone look, okay? This is the brush letters and this is available. But for those of you who've been around as long as I have, 
you'll realize uh, you might recognize some of these stamp sets. These were how our East stamp size uh, stamp sets came in an eight and a half by eleven for an eight and a half by eleven binder. This one was building blocks, essential alphabets. This one's, I think, chocolate, it's called, and it also has another smaller one. And then I also have this one in here. But that gives you an idea. I love these for titles because I am a stamper. I do like to use them in my, my books. Um, more, I, I like the idea of different fonts uh, versus using a Cricut. But that's me, personally. Okay? You get to do whatever works for you. So what I liked about this stamp set is it's distressed, right? It has, it's not perfectly uh, cut out. So you could see that, sorry, you, you could see that there's some of these little imperfections um, in the images so that it gives it a rustic flair. So it's kind of fun that I was able to do that, able to use that. So let me give you a tip, first of all, show you. What you're probably used to doing is, let me see if I can move this a little bit that way. There you go. Um, you're probably used to taking a block and putting your stamp right on the block. I don't like to do that if I want to spell something out, okay? Now, this is an older block, but I love this. It's a 4x4, four four, but our blocks have a line on it. So when I want to use a word, if I was, I'm going to put my S and I'm going to space it out so as if it's the per. this is the stamping side, right? I'm spacing it out exactly how I want it to be on my page. Yes, you could stamp these individually, no doubt about it. Because if you notice, mine are all cut, whoops, mine are all cut out. Doesn't matter. If I'm stamping a piece of paper, I'm going to maximize the paper anyway. Okay, so now... Um, and also knowing that you're close to my heart logo, there's a curvature here. This is the side of the block that's comfort for your fingers. So you want to put your block on top and pick it up. So that is, to me, the easiest way to stamp something that I want in a line. Because I find that if you're trying to line it up this way, it doesn't, you have more challenge, but yes, you could use that line, but I kind of use scrap paper as a guide. But what I can also do is if I was stamping this paper directly, I could see exactly where, how it would fit. Okay. But that's just a little tip for you. All right. Now let's show you two-tone stamping. So the colors I'm using today are toffee and sapphire. Okay. So what was the tip I already talked to you about when I'm going to do something in two colors? Right, you got it. You stamp the lighter color first. So let's ink this whole puppy up. Okay. So it's all inked up. Don't be shy with it. Remember, if you do, if you are using a brand new stamp set, you need to rub the stamps against your skin first to help break them in and then use scrap paper. Okay. Now what I want to do, and um, the blue I did, whoops, sorry, <laughs> the blue I did here and I kept the brown on the bottom. You could do it either way. So let's just follow exactly what I did, but I took that ink, I'm sorry, the stamp, and now in the blue, I'm going to stamp half of it or a little more. And I will do it, I'm going to just do it on the scrap paper so you can see. Don't mind that, it's just because I'm live, right? But that's showing you how you get your two-tone look. Now, if you want to create a shadow without re-inking, I'm moving it over about an eighth of an inch. Straight up and down motion. And once again, I'm using my Versamat for stamping on. So here you could see where the blue really popped out a little bit more. So I'm going to do that again. 
and then I'm going to do it on the white cardstock. So let's repeat this process so you can see again, right? Now, you could do left, right, left, right, tap, tap to get all of your ink. I'm really pressing. I'm going to dip half of it in the blue. And now I'm going to go to my white cardstock and stamp it straight up and down. And now you can see how beautiful that really came out, right? And then if I wanted to shadow it, get rid of my little blue right there, we could move it over. But if I'm cutting this out, I'm, I don't need to shadow it. But I'm just going to show you that if you were doing your title, going across the page right on it, that is the look that you could get as well. Isn't that pretty? Really, really cool. Okay, now let me show it to you again, but with sponging. So I'm just using the chamois to clean. It cleans everything off real easy. You just wash this in the sink, no big deal. So I like that. It's very easy to work with. Now, um, we're going to use the same colors. You know what? Let's, let's um, yeah, let's use the same colors. So here's brown. Now I'm going to sponge just the area, hopefully you can see this. This is the toffee that I'm using. But you know what, there are so many great color combinations and if you just stay with me once I'm done doing this, I have some other samples to show you and to talk to you about to give you some other ideas. Okay, so now all of that is sponged in, in the toffee. And now we're going to go in and we're going to sponge in the blue. And then where it meets, do a little darker here. This is really, this is what's fun. This is what's fun about stamping and creating the look and the style. But the biggest tip that I can give you, thanks Joan, um, is always stamp and practice on scrap paper first before you go to your main project. I mean, that's what I do all the time. All right, that should work. Okay, so I'm going to go right onto my paper. And I'll do it right above it. Straight up and down. Remember, the bigger the stamp, the more pressure. So that's why I'm giving it good pressure. Having the Versamat is really important too. So now you can see the look that you get if you use a sponge. So it's definitely lighter. You can definitely see the difference here with the blue and the, and the tan. It almost looks like I have some kind of print. Thanks, Maggie. Some kind of print on here, right? Now, if we do want to shadow it, we'll just do it so you can see. So hopefully, if you came here tonight to, you know, to practice, you used your own block, you used your own stamp, you had two ink pads, maybe you brought sponges. I don't recall if I asked about that. But you could be doing exactly the same thing with two colors right now. And it doesn't have to be an alphabet set. It could be um, a whole word that is, or a whole saying that's one of the stamps. It could be a flower. Um, I don't know, I can't think right now. But there are other things that you could do the same kind of look. So let me show you um, some samples. If you really like this, give me a thumbs up. So, <coughs> if you are interested in that fundamentals, that's part of where you can find it. There you go. All right, let me show you this. Let me get this out of the way. Um, this was a trip to Hawaii, but the word paradise was one word. And a different look that you could also do is ink it up in one stamp. One ink color. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's get that. 
If you want to, another fun look is to ink it up. I'll do it in the blue so you get a real good look, okay? You can see here I'm inking it up. I am going to use my scrap paper and waste that first layer. Then I'm actually going to go back into the ink pad and you can now see where I've added color. I might want a little bit more. Didn't even, it's like I'm perfect there. How did I do that? Okay. And it's going to be a nice sharp color. But if you want to soften it a little bit, use your um, sponge dauber. Let's see how it looks. And you'll see what I'm talking about with the two-tone. So now I'm using only one color. Wow, that's really cool, isn't it? So this was, um, what's it called again? <laughs> Sapphire. I'm thinking Star Spangled Blue. Um, this is Star Spangled Blue, first generation. We inked it up. We stamped it off. So we had the second generation of color. I went back in and inked it full strength into the blue, and then I lightly sponged the area for that great look. So that is fun. All right, so now you're understanding that this word paradise is done exactly the same way, and I think the color at the time was sunset. So you, and that's how you can see it's very softly muted with two tones. Really, really nice. All right. Pura Vida. This one I did in um, two colors, Sunset and I think it was Creme Brulee at the time. And then after I stamped it, so I would have inked the whole thing up in Creme Brulee, dipped half of it in Sunset, stamped it. Yeah, John, almost like a tie-dye. Perfect. And then I um, shadowed it. So now you can see there's a light shadow as well. Now this was all one stamp. So I didn't have to line anything up and it was just done that way. Okay. Two very different colors. So you could see this was an alphabet set. This is um, Sweet Leaf and Desert Sand. So I inked the whole thing up in Sweet Leaf and then dipped half of it in the desert sand. So that's another different look because the layout has got blues and, I'm um, sorry, the greens and the browns going. Very distressed. I wanted to show you this one, Oahu, because Oahu is on one, is one stamp. And that same idea of, this is glacier blue, so I inked the whole thing up first in glacier. Then I dipped half of it in desert sand. These are really beautiful colors, so now it would be toffee. Really uh, beautiful color combination for the beach. Okay, and lastly, as a sample, you might have seen me show you this before, to get your color and sunset is done with glacier blue or crystal at the time whichever one and then you dip the top end and the bottom end in the color right so what does that look like let's try that one more time let me flip that over so here's toffee. I'm going to ink the whole thing up in toffee. And then I'm just going to go in and dip the bottom and the top. So you have like a zebra effect. There's the top. And there's the bottom. And then when you stamp it, You're going to get that look, and then you might like the two-tone. 
So like I said, it depends, I'm sorry, the second generation. So the color inks you use will make all the difference. Like I'm not a fan of this. I do like this because of the color, right? But I love these, you know, these are really cool. But when you're playing, you have to play with color in order to understand how it's gonna stamp. So that's why you need to use scrap paper and play with your stamps and have fun with it. And really enjoy the process of what you can do with a couple of inks, your stamps, uh, a sponge or two, and your imagination. So hopefully you found these tips quite helpful. Um, thinking about what you can do with a lot of the, uh, maybe you own an alphabet stamp set already. Um, you know, there's some available on the website, but you might already have plenty in your stash. But this is something you can do with your stamps, your titles, um, or other words that you'd like to do to make a two-tone or a triple effect like that. So, all right, girls. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. And I really would love to see you give it a try and post your, um, post your ideas. I'd love to see your artwork. You're welcome, Lorraine. I'm glad uh, you were on so that you could see it and that uh, I could inspire you, hopefully, to try it and just, you know, enjoy the process of what you can do with stamping your alphabet and getting a whole new look. All right? You're welcome. Thanks, ladies. Have a good night.